Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today, and then you can watch it later at your convenience. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch, so please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone who you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. Uh, for those of you not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries, similar to your um, state library. So we provide uh, training and consulting and grants and services to all sorts of libraries in the state. So we will have shows on Encompass Live that could be for all types of libraries, public, academic, K-12, um, archives, museums, corrections, it, uh, all sorts of things, could be anything, uh, book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products. Um, so we have something for everybody who's interested in libraries at least. Uh, we sometimes have Nebraska Library Commission staff come on the show um, to talk about programs and services we're doing through the commission, um, but we also bring on guest speakers, which we have today. Um, with us today is uh, Aaron Hanna, who is from our Lexington Middle School. Good morning, Aaron. Morning. And Joanne Neiman, who is a director at our um, Beatrice Public Library. So both Nebraska people. Um, good morning, Joanne. Um, and they're going to talk about um, this. This is a great program that uh, was first, I think, first put out last year, but is still available. Um, the Heartland honors 9-11 victims and survivors. Um, so um, I'll just hand it over to you, Aaron and Joanne, to explain what this was and how you got involved and what you did at each of your libraries, both a school and a public library. Well, I think I'll start, Aaron, if that's okay with you. Um, Beatrice has used the Smithsonian poster uh, exhibit for a couple years now. And so when the 9-11 uh, anniversary one came up, we um, took the opportunity to uh, turn that into a whole um, program for the library. So if you want to go ahead and hit the the slide for me. Just tried to advance it and now it oh. will not. No, <laughs> no worries, no worries. Just a minute. You gotta love technology. <laughs> Uh, this this is just par for me because you'll see in my uh, in my slides here I did a boo boo but it turned out okay so um, so this was the the Smithsonian's um, uh, ed educational exhibit that we can do and so I put down uh, the website down there at the bottom sites um, because. Uh, you can do just about anything. And I just recently got done doing the pollinators, which here in Nebraska, it's kind of that big, big thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so we, again, went and kind of combined uh, all of our areas in and kind of showcased the pollinators. Mm -hmm. So my first one was we did a, a September 11th book display and it just showcased all of the books that were written um, then and now and uh, you can go ahead and and do the slide again yeah if you should be it's, it yeah. wasn't dancing let's see now <laughs> can you i don't know if i'm advancing would your arrow keys make it advance and go back instead of trying to use the mouse potentially i was trying to use the arrow keys oh, and okay. that not working. Don't <laughs> Sometimes just clicking on it with the mouse would make it advance potentially. Some and not seeing. Okay, so here was here was the poster exhibit, and what we did <clears throat> was we have movable um, panels, and so uh, our our staff helped me put it into a complete square so that you had to walk in. Um, and we made it intentionally a little darker so that it was more dramatic and you 
walked around and you looked at the and read the uh, the posters on the inside. So if you want to go ahead and and so um, we also have a story walk, which if anybody doesn't know about story walks, uh, it's a registered um, walk that you can buy and then follow the rules and it can you can walk in and learn at the same time so it's outdoors so this very tree i was so excited about and i bought it and i bought the three copies you were supposed to do and ripped up the, the other two not counting the pages and we have 20 um spots for a page in a picture book the pictures took up too much room so I didn't know what to do with this book that I have already laminated and made so um, I put it on the outside so if you want to hit the um, screen advance so I put it on the outside uh, so you could go outside the the box of mm -hmm. walls and see the um, the story walk that couldn't be in in our story walk but what yeah, was so traditionally the story walks are like you said outdoors just to get people outdoors. outside and they're like mm -hmm. individual posts with a um where you put um each page of a book or a couple right. of pages in right. there and, and that, will, that will be coming up yeah and that will be coming up so i i did save myself a little bit <laughs> but, but this is an interesting way of doing it if you don't i mean this is actually interesting for people who don't have the space to do an outdoor story walk right this right is, yeah it, you can do a story walk indoors just post indoors. Up pages up wherever you have an area where people can walk around walk through hallways or through the library um kind of like a scavenger hunt hunt maybe yeah, <laughs> um it, just you exactly, know read the story exactly. along page by page and so, uh, but I, I want to just, I love serendipity. Um, when, if you'll notice the shadow was unplanned, but there is a shadow on the very darkest of the dark page. And that was not planned. Um, I was putting, stapling them to the, to the wall. And that was, and I didn't even notice it until later that that was where the darkest panel was. And so where your I thought light that was, kind of go. Yeah. And so the darkest of the book was also darkest in the, in the library. But if you want to go ahead and uh, advance. So uh, I had talked to one of the schools and they were excited about going down to the story walk because they are very close to the story walk. And when I called and said, it's now at the library because I made too many of them, or I there was too many pages. She was disappointed. And so uh, she goes, well, how about if I buy you um, another book, another uh, title, mm -hmm. and we make another one? And so I said, no, you don't have to buy it. If, there, if you have another title, that would be great. So she gave me Branches of Hope, went and bought three copies of that, and... Um, put it down in the story walk. So if you wanna go ahead and advance again. So this is our story walk, um, a, a group of individuals um, in, in management courses in the city, um, every year decide what to write a grant about. And, and so they asked my opinion. I said, yes, I would love to have a story walk. And hence it, it has done. So you have these, um, nice display um, stops and they're about oh three feet away maybe four uh feet away and you you literally walk to each station and you read the story so if you want to go ahead and and advance for me so, so this uh, is so oh. i want to um explain the um a, a short obviously just shoot the um what is the topic of those two books the obviously it was this tree. oh sorry 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 yes i did not know this being from nebraska i don't hear everything i never knew that there was this tree um that kind of stood as as a, the tree of hope that it was the only tree that kind of survived the the devastation and the crash so they 
the, the two storybooks uh, tell about how they took the one, this one little um, tree, and I want to say it was uh, a cherry blossom tree, but I I can't remember. Uh, anyway, they take it and they take it to a nursery. They nurse it back to health and it is still there. Uh, they re replanted it then on the site and it's there and, and it stands as its own memorial of kind of endurance. And it, it is a very cool story. And I never knew that. Never. So 20 years later, um, and I was old enough obviously to to know to hear about things like that and i just i just didn't and so that was really disappointing uh as far as as me not searching stuff out but i took care of that and uh, it was actually so, oh interesting because uh, looking on that the the cover of that one book yeah it was actually a pear tree oh pear tree thank you thank yep. you i knew it was a fruit tree of some kind i just couldn't remember <laughs> which one blossoms yeah yeah <laughs> So uh, anyway, so this is this is St. Joe's Church School that came to to view it, and our paper was was wonderful enough to um, kind of add to our um, program announcements that what we were all doing, and they also found out that our own local uh, veterans club was doing their thing. So it it really did become a community wide thing starting. Um, and kind of, I don't want to say starting with us because obviously they, they did it on their own, but it kind of collaborated. So if you want to go ahead and switch slides. So uh, we also do a book club, a book discussion every month. And so I kind of wanted to tie the book discussion into it. So um, the day the world came to town uh, is it's a fantastic book. If no one has read it yet, you have to. I have not gone to the Broadway play Come From Away, which uh, when I was making this um, slideshow, it was showing in, in Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, and so um, it is, again, another, I did know this was happening, but um, it's just another thing. It was uh, the, the town of, uh, Gander, Newfoundland, and it's the si the size of Beatrice, you know, around 13,000, and how this whole community came together because all the airspace in uh, over the United States was closed, and no one, and this was prior to everyone having a cell phone, no one knew what was going on, and so uh, new, uh, Gander was uh, at one time uh, an Air Force base, and so it was able to hold like all of these 20 some huge jumbo jets that were on their way to and from everywhere in the world. And so now this town had to come together and figure out what to do with all of these people that were on all of these planes because they didn't know what was going on. They didn't know how long it was gonna go on. And it was just, it was an incredible, it is, it is an incredible story. So uh, yeah, if, I hope I've piqued someone's interest in, in reading it. Um, I've read it twice and I love it. So that was our other one. So if you wanna go ahead and do the next. So, so I tried to do, um, get the kids involved, get their parents involved, get the, the whole community involved. And so then that's how I did it. So thank you very much. Erin, I'll hand it over to you. And while we're switching over, I just want to let people know because oh. someone did ask. Um, yes, you will have access to these slides afterwards. So all the links and information in here you will have when we do the um, when the archive is put up the recording recorded session. Thank you. I think it was kind of neat that we both felt it was important for kids who weren't even alive during this time to be able to learn about and experience this this part of history. And I think the story walk is a cool idea to involved the community. Um, I was in a school setting and so most of mine, um, all of, just about all of mine just took place during the school day. And right here you see um, a couple of ELL classes. They didn't do the same thing that all of the other classes did when they went through the display. I'll show you in just a minute, but we did show them some 
um, of the video and they did look around at the posters and here they're looking at some of the firefighter um, example here. So some things I had to think about uh, because we were in a school was just where in the world where I put this. We have a classroom in our library, but it's often used for other things. So it was a little bit tricky trying to get that booked. Also, um, a key concern is always, will teachers be willing to bring their classes? Will they see this as a worthy enough activity to schedule their classes to come into? And so I did a little recruiting with the history teachers and fortunately was able to have just about everybody in the school come through. Um, we didn't have display boards. Um, there were, of course, time constraints. We have a bell every 45 minutes or so. And then um, I wanted to do an open house for the community. Um, we needed to use the iPads that the kids had. I really wanted the kids to be engaged with things and just to, um, to maybe not see it as much as an assignment, but just as a way to explore part of history in a fun way. And then I also wanted to build that website and assignment. So over to the right, you see um, I had with each of the posters that came from the Smithsonian, I had a couple of questions that the kids needed to answer as they were going through. So it was kind of, um, Christy, you mentioned this, a scavenger hunt type thing earlier that this is not like go wherever and try to find things. They were following the posters, but they did have to look for specific bits of information to answer those questions. And then I built a website too. So they just QR code. Um, there was a QR code entrance into it. And then they just advance from poster to poster and it tells them some things that they can look at. Um, and most of those linked back to what was on the Smithsonian or the 9-11 Memorial and Museum um, pages with the um, interviews from some of the people that were there at the time, um, some just videos that I found elsewhere, some pictures, some of the artifacts that they have posted on their uh, website and in their museum that I wanted the kids to make sure that they were seeing at various points along with the posters. So we were able to schedule the library classroom. Um, I mentioned about the history teachers and then we had kids haul these display boards over from the Dawson County Historical Museum. And this is kind of how we set it up, kind of like a museum type experience. Um, I guess as I'm looking at this and after looking at your um, pictures of the story walk, it's similar in a sense, although we don't have a book going on, but they're moving from station to station. So over to the left, we have um, the first couple of stations and the first couple of posters. And again, that QR code is on the table and it will take them to their first assignment. So they would have been given their assignment sheet that they are following around in small groups. This was a little bit tricky um, because we had a lot of teachers that wanted to like bring the entire grade, um, like all of first period's seventh graders, for example. And so they came in these groups of like 40 and we couldn't really crowd around a small poster. And so we split into groups of four and you'll see in a minute that I had to create a few other stations to spread the kids around the room. But here is kind of how, how those um, display boards were set up and there weren't enough to do the whole thing. So you'll see in a minute that I had to use some walls and things. So over to the far left is where this gets started. We did have some teachers that were pretty actively exploring this with their students. You can see uh, Mr. Lara and Mr. Allen in these pictures here. And the kids are discussing with each other um, trying to trying to figure out what the answers were for the various questions. We did borrow some volunteer fire department gear from our town. I wanted it to be um, kind of a tangible thing where kids were really imagining what would it have been like to be there. And so they were lifting up the heavy um, boots and the, the coat and you just hopefully it gave them a pretty good sense of that was a really difficult thing and to add fire and frantic frantic people and just the whole tragic sense of the day to it hopefully um, 
really got cemented in their mind something that I'm hoping that they won't forget now that they're um, now that they've left this experience too. The audio and video recordings really, really captivated our students, um, especially the principal, Ada Dolch. That's a little picture of her over to the right. Um, and she was talking about trying to get her kids out to safety and how they, they kind of got separated and then what it was like for her. And she had somebody that she loved that was in one of the towers and just how her emotions were split among all these all these different people. But that felt very real to the kids, I think because they were in a school building at the time. Um, Todd Beamer's phone recording with, um, with the air, um, and I can't even think for sure who he was talking to, the air tower, the air support. Um, and then the Red Cross volunteer was another one that really stood out to them that I that I really noticed them being captivated by and that um, she was talking about her experiences, but also how um, the effect of 9-11 is nowhere near over because she still has um, people in her life, she and her husband and, and others who not only lost their lives, but who are still suffering um, just with the complications from the, the dust and all of the other injuries they may be sustained through the, um, through the I guess, the, just the collapse of the buildings and, um, and just the cleanup efforts. We had our art teacher had something up in her classroom and she wanted to include this, so we just incorporated it right in, and that's the, the slide in, or the picture that's in the center, and it kind of shows the changed skyline and the timeline of events if it were on a cell phone. And we had some things that were kind of made up too. You'll notice on the picture to the right, we those are just my suitcases and we had like a, a fake ticket, um, just some things to try to get them in the mindset of if you were traveling, this is what it would have been like. Parts of our tour were really, really quiet. <clears throat> There was the part about all of the memorials that were left, but also that um, my daughter is missing. Here's what she looks like. Can you help us reunite? Those kinds of things were very, very thought provoking. I think the kids really were able to put themselves in the place to an extent of the people experiencing 9-11 firsthand. Um, there were a lot of things that I hadn't known that were presented in the posters. I didn't really know about some of the the other attacks on U.S. embassies and things that were highlighted in the posters. Um, I, I um, have a note, up, note up on the right. They, so they that's can, interesting. So they included thing other from other times, other previous events or since then that have been that have happened. It wasn't. It's not just about 9/11. Right. Right. So the first few okay. posters were about the specific events of the day, but then it did talk about things that had maybe led up to it or related events. And then it talked about um, even some of the memorials that had been established or what have our, what have our laws changed to be, um, like in the airport security is obviously heightened and, and things like that since then. So they, have, they definitely took the kind of, um, they took the event, but then went before it and then went after it as well. Nice. Uh, we tried to highlight some of the books from our collection. We have some fiction um, books that are 9-11 related. And so that's what you see over here to the left. I added pictures all over the place and, and masks and things to try to kind of tie it into what's going on more recently with COVID. And then in just a second here, here you see two our nonfiction titles. Um, I did <laughs> did bring an oak tree in, and this was a little bit tragic because um, I then went to go plant it at my house. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to make it, but but it is. It's surviving. But we tied yellow ribbons on that just to kind of get the sense of we're remembering and honoring this event in history. And then, um, like I said, we had we had a lot of kids in the library and that's not a huge classroom so we also spread out onto a wall in the library and these were some additional questions that were 
that were asked that were not poster related, but we just kind of had them um, be thinking like, what does a terrorist look like? Um, we talked about stereotypes and there had been a lot of stereotyping at this at the time that we did this last um, last fall, um, with placing a lot of blame on um, any any person who is Chinese, like you're you're the cause of this virus. And so we talked about that a little bit too. So um, very timely, yes. Yeah, they could definitely relate mm -hmm. to aspects of it, and I I think they found it very interesting when they looked over at those pictures to the left too, like. Who do I think is a terrorist here? And all of all of them. And I said, what do they look like? Well, they look like everybody. It's not the it's not the look, it's the action of the mm -hmm. person of a terrorist. So that was interesting to watch the kids look at that. We also had a little little section about the flight path so you could kind of see where the planes were headed, kind of what the um, what the terrorist plan was and how they planned to attack. Here we have another teacher. This is Mr. Sullivan. Um, he is trying to get some of those QR code videos to uh, to play on his phone. And then we just have some pictures about patriotism. So all of these, these videos and the QR code and videos that you've been talking about, someone, so those are provided as part of the poster exhibit from the 9-11 Museum? They're on the website. Okay. Yeah. And there are some teaching materials that are given with that. And there are just, um, they have some things, but tons and tons of information so i just kind of um selected some that i thought would be especially i guess significant for our students and just kind of tried to highlight some of those and then they had the link as well if they wanted to explore it further but they, they have amazing information on their on their site um we also i had mentioned we tried to kind of do that connection between um, COVID and 9-11, just in the, um, in terms of the health impact, in mm. terms of people feeling scared, um, society kind of shutting down. And a lot of kids were really able to, um, to do some of that comparing and contrasting. So it was very interesting to see what they came up with. Um, just on that Venn diagram, we just stuck on the wall. Um, our public library loaned us some newspapers that were from New York um, in the days following 9-11. And so that was very cool to be able to see um, just what the immediate impact was and to kind of look at some of that primary source material that we don't often get to see. I think the kids were very, very surprised. I mean, it's, when you just glance at those, it looks very sensationalized almost like a what you might see in an inquirer or something but it was just that big and it was sensational real news that was the feeling and nationally that was the general feeling it wasn't like yes it didn't feel sensationalized at all at the time no right it was what it was necessary mm -hmm. um i one of the things that i thought was really um it for me about 9-11 is just how much you saw the efforts of communities coming together and I didn't know either about the um, the community of Gander that Joanne was talking about but just that so many so many groups were putting together fundraisers bringing food and all kinds of things like that so we did just a little unite in kindness and then they had an opportunity to say thank you to some of those on people that were especially heroic um, during 9-11 and who helped protect our community today. And then there was just a crossword puzzle station. And again, that's part of that was just to split the kids up a bit and to get them moving around the room. We did do a public open house. Um, the Daughters of the American Revolution, their local chapter um, came to host that event. And so here you see Linda Minns and Marge Bader, they are part of our local chapter and they brought snacks and also just um, kind of hosted a, um, a Saturday afternoon time and people came from the community to look through and we had students that had been through the experience kind of lead them through and um, 
point out things that were that were highlights to them. And just kind of shared their own impressions of what had what had struck them that they didn't know about. And it was interesting for the students too, because a lot of those community remember members were remembering things from that time and sharing with them as well. So I think, yeah, that's that's the end of it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's an interesting thing, yeah, that, I mean, there's all these resources from the 9-11 Museum and part of this exhibit, but um, we who were, as you said, Joanne, around at the time and not, uh, you know, like these children who are not even born yet, um, we have our own memories and, and that we can be resources for them um, about uh, what happened and how it felt and how it affected us, um, too, all across the country. Um, that was something too that was really neat about the materials that were provided by the 9-11 Memorial and Museum, um, that they had a lot of these firsthand accounts, but they mm -hmm. also had people um, that were maybe related to somebody who was there. And so they did, mm -hmm. it did kind of branch out a bit, but it was, it was a neat addition when our community members had come to and just the things that they shared, you're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, I know um, some people may know know me. I'm from New York, actually. I'm not a native Nebraskan, as many of you may be. Um, I moved to Nebraska in 2000, actually, just the year before this happened. test <laughs> sorry they're doing fire alarm testing here today um <coughs> really bad timing so uh, sorry uh had to mute myself for a second there anyway yes i am from new york i moved here in 2000 right the year before this happened um and uh so yeah this is something that is very and that you were um oh, i forget one of you mentioned that still years later um it's it's a heart wrenching thing. It it still upsets me today, um, seeing all this and the presentations and and things. Uh, I've been to and in the t twin towers multiple times. Um, you, you know before, of course, um, in years before. Uh, my sister had worked worked sometimes in Manhattan, um, and on the day of this, I wasn't sure where she was working. Was she? Yeah. You know, there was so there was a lot of that. Uh, panic and chaos and fear and wondering, okay, how do I get in touch with her? Can't reach her because she's in New York. Call someone else who's farther upstate in New York who can find, you can, I can reach and find out what's going on. Um, traveling right afterwards, you mentioned the planes, the, you know, the, um, the planes that were, everything was uh, shut down. And that's, that's really all our students have ever known if they've been to an airport is just the the increased security and um, they've, they've never known a time that wasn't like this sorry um on when this happened actually i was traveling and i was in ohio for a work meeting um and it was like the first day of the meeting and i still had like a couple of days left and getting back home planes I apologize again. Uh, planes were grounded for days. This wasn't just the day of. It was like for at least a week or more. Um, I mean, I don't know exactly the timing, but they were grounded for days. And um, I had flown to Ohio. I had to rent a car and drive myself back home because there were no flights. There was no way to get anywhere. So there's a lot of, yeah, things that um, happen beyond the day that I think sometimes you don't realize. You know, sometimes traumatic events things like this are a one-day thing and then we figure out how to deal with it but this week became so big um like you mentioned say sensationalized no it was huge yeah one of the things i wanted to say you know we didn't think here in nebraska it touched us but it actually did because when they cleared the airspace um uh president bush was on Air Force One and landed in Omaha. And no one knew he was in Omaha, but that's where he went. And he landed in at the uh, at Offutt Air Force Base. So we 
here in middle America, we even had something touching us. Right, because we are, it is one of the strategic places that they would send the president during times of crisis that you, like you said, you're not supposed to know because it's supposed to keep them safe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So some questions about the actual poster sessions and, and getting a hold of this. Um, this is something, as you both mentioned, from the, it's the 9-11 um, Memorial and Museum. I wanted to make sure I got the title of that right. Um, how many, can, can you explain exactly what comes with it? Um, people, people are asking, you know, how many posters? Um, I see, you can see how big yours are there on those pictures, Aaron, you know, how much, um, you know, how many posters are there? How much space might you need? Um, how did you get these printed out? Do they send you the posters? Do you do it yourself? How did, you know, how does that all work or, um, yeah. There, there were 14 posters that were sent and you could request them um, in poster form. And that's what I did. Um, we don't and, have and we have a big printer, so all I did was downloaded it and printed it ourselves. Ah, so you have an option, okay. And they came with some suggested, here's how you can display, and it was more just in a big row with X number of inches between them. Um, but I knew be ahead of that that I really wanted it to be um, something where more kids could get around them and have a little more experience. And so I spread it out a lot more than what they had recommended. And we did the opposite. We wanted to make it be more dramatic and feel like you were in it. And so we kind of made it in a smaller space. Mm -hmm. And that I can see how that would definitely add to that, that whole feeling of, you know, being trapped in the towers and mm -hmm. yeah. They were very easy to work with. There was a training um, that we could do online. And then there was also, um, there were also some live program type videos that we could show, yes, on, on the September 11th date that I believe were available the day ahead as well. Um, I wasn't able to put that in with classrooms, um, but we did have it showing when we did our open house. And that was more just a big commemoration of the 20th anniversary and just a lot of that. Um, so the museum provided you with some training and instruction on how to use this. They didn't, they, it wasn't just, you know, figure it out for yourself. <laughs> now their, their resources are really, really good. So mm -hmm. they, they send a lot of uh, like even questions so that if you, you know, wanted to start a discussion, like a book club discussion questions type thing. I wish they would have done that. They did not do that. It was it was questions um, concerning the the posters, but ah, okay. resources were there. And and mm -hmm. uh, my book club, my personal book club, had read this a while ago, and so I knew this book was the book that I was going to do. Um, after after I had done that, I thought, oh my gosh, there were so many other books I could have chosen too. That there was even a teen one that um, extremely loud, incredibly close, or something like that. Um, which, which was a movie too with Tom Hanks, and that would have been a great one to do too. So there was unlimited choices. Yeah, there are, there's been many things put together, made since in like both books and obviously senior displays there of both fiction and nonfiction books and movies made and whatnot. Um, another question here, um, I see a lot of, and it is the most dramatic view, of course, that a lot of these pictures are of um, the Twin Towers in, in, in New York City, Manhattan. Um, is there anything about the um, other locations to the Pentagon and in Pennsylvania? Was there, is there um, information about that in this as well? Yes, and I'm going to shrink this down and I can back up so you can see. Oops, maybe I can. There we go. Um, I'm not sure you can see it well from. 
one of my my most dramatic ones was the one you know help me find this person we're searching for and and then the watch um that they found and just i personal items that they found yeah this this one i thought there was a picture there is a picture of the pentagon and that's what the kids are looking at right mm -hmm. here and i thought there was a little better view of the of the poster but there isn't mm -hmm. okay so they'd include everything from the day i mean it is obviously the well yeah, the pictures of the Pentagon are very dramatic as well. Well, and there there was even a poster of the um, the one that was headed towards the the White House that went in. They they crashed into the field in Philadelphia in uh, Pennsylvania. Right. That there was a poster on that one too. Okay. Oh, good. Good. And and there were two just like the the one in the middle here that is showing. That was one of like the candlelight vigils that they had and um i think over um yeah and this this one in this this 13th station they um they had several different memorials they showed um, memorial glade and it, it just it was very moving just because it i think i was i was amazed honestly you kind of never know what you're going to get for sure <laughs> with middle school. I mean, usually they um, are great learners, but sometimes they're not super engaged. But I think they could tell even from the people in the pictures that this was that this was a big, big deal, even though they weren't alive during this time. I think it um, really came to life for them through these uh, posters. Mm -hmm. Definitely. All right. Oh, I think that was, all right. Does anybody have any other questions they want to ask? Um, we still have 15 minutes left. We're doing this perfect timing here today. I know we weren't sure. This is the, this is the first time you've all done this presentation, correct, on this or mm -hmm. this full? Yeah, awesome. Um, if anybody does have any other questions. <laughs> Um, Sorry, that was my hand. <laughs> <laughs> you, no problem. Um, you can type into the question section again and um, ask any questions about the session, um, about the um, what's available, the resources. Um, I forget who, one of you did mention that um, this was uh, you did this both last year. It was the 20th anniversary of 9/11, um, so of course that made sense to do that. Uh, but the um, poster session is still available. It's it wasn't um, correct. It wasn't just a uh, um, just for last year. Yeah, they have posters back from. They had the uh, World War One. I, I I believe World War One was the uh, anniversary of that. That was the first posters that we had ordered from um, from. The Smithsonian and mm -hmm. so and you can still get those too mm -hmm. okay yeah and we do have the link to the page uh, the 9-11 Memorial Museum page about that um, and yeah you can download it PDF friendly there's an installation guide and like you said oh you mentioned you're on the recorded training um, Yeah, so um, you know, some people did this last year, as you all did, um, coinciding with the anniversary. But whenever someone might want to do this particular session, um, any September, <laughs> um, any time in um, August or September, uh, the, the resources are still available out there for people to use. Yeah. Now, is this something? Um, oh, here we go. Ah, okay. So that's a good question. Is this something that? you would do again and like redo one of these set poster sessions um regularly like i know aaron you did it with those certain students but um was it only certain age groups that came in like would you do that as an annual thing or regularly so the new students coming up might experience it yeah i would not do it um we have a few things at our school that we rotate every three years so that oh. every kid that's in the building gets at some point so I can I can see myself doing this again, like in three years with the new batch of kids, <laughs> you know, with the, with but I with, because right. we do seventh and eighth, it's not something that I would repeat yearly. 
for the, um, right, wait till there's new kids to, sure, yeah. sure. So if teachers wanted something specific from it or wanted to borrow, I definitely kept everything. Oh, sure. Yeah. Keep it open as a possibility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's something like you said, you, uh, it's interesting to see how you both used parts of it in different ways that you could pick out just some of them to do something smaller or something for a special event or something um, as you want to in the future. Yeah. Good questions. Yeah. I really like, you know, the more I think about just the, the different ways to set it up, too. I mean, that would be a whole different experience for people to have if they were just, you know, in the posters in a kind of confined space like that. I think that'd be really meaningful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, getting creative with it and doing it in, yeah, in a different different setup for different reasons for a different event. Yeah. Um, cool. We did have a little bit of oh kinks to work out, I guess, after our first group of kids came through. We had first everybody brought their iPads and we had a whole bunch of different videos playing at different points. And so then we we wised up and just thought, okay, one iPad per group was much easier to manage and <laughs> noiseless oh, chaotic sure sure <laughs> so we kind of learned as we go like always all right um not seeing any new questions coming in just making sure i can't see as people are typing so i have to wait until you're done <laughs> uh to see if you've got something you're you're typing in into the questions um I don't see anything new coming in right now, but that that's that's fine. Um, this was a very um, great session. Thank you so much, Joanne and Aaron, sharing how you um, used this session. I hope um, other schools and libraries used this last year. I know we did promote that it was available um, from the commission to let people, libraries and everyone know that it was out there, that they had put together this new um, exhibit that's available from the 9-11 um, a memorial and museum um, and like Joanne says the Smithsonian does these kind of things all the time for all sorts of topics the pollinators one and then we're, we're one and uh, you know just check their pages your the websites you're always going to find something new that you can use and, and do this and not having to come up with it for yourself from scratch is I think awesome <laughs> um, that they will send you the posters or give you the files if you have the ability to print them yourself or do whatever you, um, you can that um, you know, just makes it so much easier. <laughs> I mean, I know we're always looking for uh, programming and uh, displays, display ideas, and having to build it all ourselves can be a lot, <laughs> I think. Um, but having these pre, you know, created is, I think, really awesome. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I didn't see any other questions come in while I was just babbling there. Um, any uh, last words from you, Joanne or, and Aaron, before we wrap things up? Well, if I do it, if I do it again, like in however many years, I would. I loved how Aaron made it stations and and really kind of made it interactive. Um, so I would I would probably try and do something more like that too, just to. I like the interactiveness and mm -hmm. yeah, just kind of making it more real. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It just opens your mind, I think, seeing other people's like I liked yours as well, Joanne. And I <laughs> I'm really appreciative, Krista, Krista, that you mentioned this because I had never heard of it. I'm not a I've been in the library for five years and um I don't always know where to look for things, but this was so beautifully curated by the Smithsonian. Mm -hmm. Like it was and it's of, free. It's just yes, yes. I'll say that's a key. <laughs> a key. <laughs> but it was I I felt really proud of it and not by my own doing, but just I was I was really glad to be able to offer the experience to our school. And I think that's how I felt when I went to the Smithsonian too. Like, whoa, <laughs> this is amazing. And I didn't know these things. And well, they they know what they're doing. 
when they're putting together their own displays in the actual actual Smithsonian. And I think it's great that they're willing to share their expertise at doing this with any libraries and schools that want to um, use them. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Okay, so thank you so much. Thank you, Joanne and Aaron, for sharing about this. Thank you, everyone, for attending today. I'm going to pull back presenter control to my screen. Um, so I want to uh, just do a little wrap up for today's show. So as I said, the slides will be available. Uh, Aaron, you can email me the link to that whenever you get a chance. Those are uh, the Google slides that she has there. So everyone will have access to that. You can see all of their displays, how they did things, um, the links that are in there as well. Um, this is the session page for today's show, and I was going to show you, um, I do have the link here to the information on the um, 9-11 Memorial and Museums page about the, um, this goes directly to, you know, th this is a whole website all about 9-11, of course, um, but this is going directly to the page about the poster exhibition, where, as you can see, you can download them, get your installation guide, training, they do ask if you want to share what you're doing with them, they have a Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, so uh, if you wanted to do something at your library or your school with this, uh, the resources are still out there and you can definitely do that um, at any time for with any um, event um, on any uh, anniversary of 9-11 if you wanted to. So we have a link right there for you to access that. Uh, so that will wrap it up for today's show. As I said, it has been recorded and it will be on our archive page. I'll just pop over here. This is our main page for Encompass Live. Our upcoming shows are here. Our link to our archives is here at the bottom. And these are the most recent ones at the top. So today's show will be um, right here at the top. Should have it uploaded and ready for everyone to watch by the end of the day tomorrow. Everyone who attended today's show and registered for today's show will get an email directly from me. Otherwise, we pushed out on our face, on our um, Twitter and Facebook and social media, um, and are through our mailing lists here at the Library Commission. Um, there'll be a link to the recording, which goes onto our YouTube channel, and um, a link to the slides. Okay. While we're here, I'm going to be doing a lot of editing to this show. I can tell. <laughs> all the muting I've had to do. Um, while we're here, I'll show there's a search here. You can search our show archives for any topics you might be interested in, see if we've done a show about it. Um, you can search the full archives or just the most recent 12 months if you want just real recent. Um, that is because this is our full show archives going all the way to the beginning, and I'm not going to scroll all the way down. Um, okay. Encompass Live premiered in January 2009, and we have shows going all the way back. So just pay attention to the original broadcast date of anything, um, so you can just know when that show actually happened. I apologize again now about this. I obviously have no control over when they do these tests in our building. <clears throat> At least we know you'll be safe. Yes. All right. So. Um, so just pay attention to the original broadcast date of anything that you watch on here. Some of our shows will stand the test of time. Some may be um, and still be good and useful. Some will be old, outdated information. Links may no longer work. You never know. Um, so just pay attention to that. But we are a library. We do. This is something we do sometimes keep things for historical purposes. And we'll always keep them out there for as long as there's somewhere to host them. Um, I mentioned we do put things out onto our social media. We do have a Facebook page for Encompass Live. I have that linked here. Um, if you like to use um, Facebook, give us a like. We have reminders of when our, here's a log, reminder to log in today's show, uh, about our speakers, when our recordings are available. We also push out onto our like, Twitter and Instagram. We use the NCUMP Live little hashtag abbreviation for the show, so you can keep an eye on things we're doing um, that way. Uh, so that'll wrap it up for today's show. Um, and, and here's our schedule for the upcoming months. Look for more dates to be filled in for July and August. Uh, next week, we'll be talking about policies of yes. Um, librarians from North Liberty Library in Iowa, our neighbors in Iowa, are talking to us about their um, inclusion policy statement that they've done for their library and how you can do that at your own library. So please do sign up for that show or any of our other upcoming shows we have um, on our schedule. Um, thank you everybody for being here with us this morning. Thank you, Aaron and Joanne, for sharing what you did with your 9-11 um, displays on um, this wonderful information. And hopefully we will see you all on a future episode of Encompass Live. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, bye-bye.